the mind. Okay. Okay. Welcome everyone to our discussion of Darkei uh, Talmud. I'll just add a little note here. I was very happy to see uh, that the student of his student, which is Reb Yosef Cairo, wrote a wrote a sefer on this type of methodology. Actually, what he did was there was a, a, a person who came before him called Halichus Olam that wrote a, uh, a study of the various uh, foundation moves in in learning, and he wrote a commentary on it. So, Bezut Hashem, uh, I'll be learning with my Russo. But, uh, it's, a, it's a powerful, um, it's a powerful method when you when you when you have things organized and you understand what you're doing consciously, so you're able to uh, be much more precise and much more clear in your learning, and also understand what you don't understand. Uh, you can not be, or you can define what you don't understand. We're holding here in the next to the last chapter of the of this of the sefer where he's describing the key operating words. Now here's one where he described um, this this um, set of moves he's described uh, before in the, in the sefer. I'll just go through it and we'll take one example. But it's a very, very critical um, uh, set of moves. Okay? So this one is called Peshitta and it goes with Sakadaita Chamina, Maudasema, and ends with Kamashmala. Okay, so we have let let him uh, spell it out and then we'll we'll give a quick example that he brought we brought before. Peshitta Zehalashan Yoma Kashir Hadavahu Mabuar Veina Lavshum Cholik. This operating word the Gemara uses when the text in front of us uh, seems to be very um, understood and no one argues about it. So if it's so obvious, then we ask Peshitta. Ukamachuhu muskal rishon. Here's that word again. And it's, it, it's almost like a, uh, um, an axiom, okay? Like uh, fire is hot. It's a muskal rishon. She'ein bo shum chiddish. There's actually no chiddish at all. So that's what he says. That's peshitta. Peshitta means when we see a statement in front of us that seems obvious. We've learned it before. It's well known. There's no reason to say it. Aval im yesh bo shum achlokis ben tano letano mora ain't actually peshitta. But if the statement before us is a machlokis, so then you don't say peshitta. Okay, because it's a it's a chiddush that a is saying that statement, because someone else is not saying it. So peshit is only asked when we we don't see any dissenting opinion, and we don't see any uh, need to say the statement. In response to the peshita, we have to produce a reason why the statement was said and a reason why the statement is a chiddush. And that's the second move, which is Salkadai de Chamina, Mahu, or Mahu de Sema. The same thing. Salkadai de Chamina means what would have arose in your mind if he hadn't have said it. And Mahu de Sema, what would you have said if he didn't say it? What would be the alternative opinion? Hu ha'ola al hadas betechilas hamakshav of the eel. The, the, the Salkadai de Chamina is what comes to your mind in the beginning of your thinking and your investigation. It's your Vinikras Svar It's a very important statement. This is called Svar Mibuchutz. This this is before you came to the text what you would have thought. That's called Salkadaita Khamina. Therefore I always have to produce in a text which seems obvious a alternative position that you would have thought. And therefore the text becomes meaningful and a chiddush. And we could say, Kamash Mlan, once we now know what you would have thought, the alternative position, we, we could say, therefore, the text comes to teach us this new idea. Who has svara ha'emitis kvamuka shalalacha. 
the Kamash Milan is the true Svara and the depth of the Halacha. Ben B'divrei Torah or Mishnah or Talmud. It, it, whether we're talking about a statement in the Torah, the Mishnah, or the Talmud, the Kamash Milan will always be the true essence of what the statement has to communicate. So here's an example that he brought before. We'll go over it again to get uh, a physical example of this uh, concept. It says in Nida, Daf uh, Yudbeis, Tana Rabbanan Isha She'ein La Vesed, a woman that doesn't have a, uh, a period. She's a Surah L'Shamesh, husband can't live with her. Ve'ein La Kasuva, and she doesn't get her Kasuva, the Lo Peros, and uh, doesn't get fed, the Mzonos, the Lo Meluas, or clothes. She gets no benefits. And the Yetze, she has to be divorced, below Yaxi Rolomis, and she can never be taken back. So a woman who unfortunately has this medical problem uh, gets, gets no um, husband. I don't know why I didn't know before, but he didn't. He uh, found out afterwards, maybe she was young, whatever. Um, or maybe developed, whatever it was. But whatever it is, when the woman is in that condition, he has to divorce her and never remarry her. That's the opinion of Rev Meir. So the Gemara has a kasha, and it says, Yotze velo yaksi olamis peshita. He has to divorce her and not uh, remarry her. It's obvious, of course. I mean, why is he divorcing her? Because she has this problem. So of course you can't take her back because she has the problem. So the statement of Rav Meir, the second part, which says velo yaksi olamis, seems to be totally extraneous. It's obvious. I mean, you just say the eight say, period. Uh, and we know he can't take her back because <laughs> it's us to marry her. We just have to divorce her again. Okay, so we have to now provide a meaning of Reb Meir's uh, statement that says she can't come back. So we have to produce a Havamin, what you would have thought. So we say, the Gemara says, Lo Tzricha, we do need a statement. Dahada ve'itkana, because maybe after he divorced her, she uh, all of a sudden uh, had her, her her cycle, her period. So now she's healthy. The mahu the same. What would you what would you have thought if after he divorced her she became uh, normal again? Lahadar. Okay, now he could take her back, right? Kamash Milan. So the statement comes to teach us: No, he can't take her back, even if she does get well. Why? Zinin da azla um nasve u mitkanes. It it could happen that after he divorced her, she'll become uh, healed and she'll have her uh, she'll be well again, and she'll remarry. And the original Baal would say, the Yomer, who, if I would have known that she was going to become uh, a normal woman, a filo hayo not namely mea mana loa I would have never divorced her. The nimsa get batel, so then, since the, the man divorced her on Tanai, uh, and then her children will be mamzerim because the whole get was all tonight. It's more of a lush and horror thing, but it, in the in the shot of here. But anyway, what we're trying to understand is, Reb Meir said he can't take her back. That seemed to be obvious because he she was uh, she had this condition. So the Gemara says no. The the Hiddish of Reb Meir is even if even if she. Uh, gets well, he can't take her back. Well, why not? She's well now, why can't he remarry her? It's a gazera. Because, because uh, in this case, maybe he would take her back and everything would be fine, but in other cases, if she remarried, then the first husband would uh, be mozi laz on her and say, wait a minute, I knew she was well, uh, uh, maybe she could get better, I never would have divorced her. 
and therefore uh, people say it was only a get al tanai, and since the get on a condition, the condition wasn't fulfilled, and, it, and uh, that she was sick and she got better, so the condition wasn't fulfilled. The get is bottle and the new children are mamzerim. So Rabbi Meir said we have to make gezera that once he divorces her because of this reason, he can never take her back. So those are the three steps. The first is seems obvious, Peshita, that he can never take her back because she's sick forever, that's what we thought. The answer is no, what's the Kiddush? Even if she gets better, he can't take her back. Why? Why? Because uh, if, we, if we let her take her back, uh, then we run into the problem of, uh, of uh, him being mostly lies on her and saying, I wouldn't have divorced her if she was well. Okay, so that's the three very important rules and remember the if one of the most important elements of this uh, safer is to explain to us that nothing is obvious. In other words, whenever we see something that's obvious, we have to ask ourselves, wait a minute, why does it have to be said? Now the question is, what makes things Peshitta? Okay, so we explained if it's written somewhere, if it's obvious because of uh, the tab, okay, so then it doesn't have to be said. So every statement that we look at always has to tell us something that we would have thought opposite. The Svarak and Sona, the, the outside reasoning would have said not what the statement is saying. And we always have to produce that. We, when we can't produce it, we have the Kasha, a Peshitta. And then to get to the depth of the meaning here, we have to think about why it was said and come to the new realization that is a Chiddush here in Halacha. Okay, those are the rules there. Okay, this one I'm just going to uh, we'll read through this one. It's another common one. Ukashir Tananosin Mishpat Vishnei Nosin. When Atana gives you the law in two different cases. Case A and Case B. Be'echad l'chayev u'b'sheni liftor. The first case he says is chayev, and he says the second case is potter. So he says, Sarek shi'eshne nos'in b'tor echad u'ba'ofen echad. They both, the statement should be in the same condition. They should be talking about the same um, the, sa the, the same case, they, except with a variation, but with one variation. They shouldn't be talking about two wildly disparate things. Okay, Shim Lokain, if the second case is not, is not the same type of case with a new condition, so the Gemara says, the Liflo Velis Nebidido. Why do you have to make a new case Okay, in other words, you have case A and case B. They should really be um, case A is Chayev and case B is Pater. But the two cases, um, should be, he says, lined up with each other, which means, which means that if it what what you really should be saying here, I mean, what I understand here is that two cases can't be be the second case can't be a sniff of the first case, cannot be a subcategory of the second case. Because if that's true, why did you have to come on to a new case? He says, I looked here in Bubblecom, I just couldn't see it very quickly, but I brought another case here. Let's see if we can see what it says here. Uh, Tashma. It says in the Varim when a woman. Uh, um, uh, see someone uh, fighting with her husband, and she, she grabs her private parts. And it says in the pasuk, "Vekatsa es kapara mamon." It says, "Vekatsa es kapara." Her hand should be cut off. And the the Brisa says, "No, if she hurts the person, so she has to pay back a monetary." Uh, if she uh, she has to pay back with money the, the, the person who she, she hurt. So the, 
the Gemara says, my lab no yochel hatzil al yidei davacher. Aren't we talking about a case that she's only she 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 took uh, the only way she could hurt this get this person from stopping them to fight is if uh, she grabbed his private parts, uh, and and therefore we see, and what was the, the upshot of this Gemara, that uh, a person is uh, allowed to take the law into his own hands. Only in a case where there's no other alternative. Excuse me, that's not true. Even in a case where there's no other alternative, they want to prove that you can't take the law into your own hands. Because it looks like here there was no other alternative. She had to stop this man from attacking her husband, wherever, and she uh, damaged him, his private parts, and she has to pay. So it must mean that uh, she had no other alternative, and that's what she did in order to stop the fight. And she still has to pay, which means that what? Even if, um, even if there's no other way, you're not allowed to take the law in your own hands. There's a whole deal over there. So, you know, so that's we want to bring a proof that that's true. So the Gemara is dochek and says, no, the Pasuk is talking about where she had another way of uh, stopping the attacker. Okay? So if you have another way of topping the stacker, so that's why she has to pay. If she had another way, to be honest, she, she wouldn't have to pay. So the Gemara says, wait a minute. If you're going to say that, that this is talking about a case where she did uh, she had another way to stop the fight besides doing what she did. So it would come out of al any Pater. But the the din would be that if she did not have another way out, it would be she she wouldn't have to pay. So the Gemara says if that's true, Adatan Adatan a safe Vashilchayada Pratlishliach based in when the when when it was taught in the sefer of the of the mishnah that v'shalchiyada that's the one that has to pay but the shliach based in doesn't have to pay he's butter so if it's true that she also there's a case when she doesn't have to pay also lift love will this neighbor the dog why go to a case of shliach based in just say this case that you're talking about. So, if it were true that the Mishnah uh, was talking about a case where she was where she could be, excuse me, if it was true that she she could she could be putter when there was no other way to stop the fight. Then we should have in, in the Mishnah in the first case that that says in the Sefer that talks about the Shliach based in is 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 Potter should have talked about her said she's Chayev when there was another way out but she would be Potter if there was no other way out that's what it should have said it should have brought the same case and just showed. In which case is she chayev? In which case she's potter? It only brought one case that she's chayev, and then it switched the the scene to sh the to the based in, and said it's the based in case that's potter. Well, if it's true that there was a case where she is potter, then the Mishnah should have written two variations: the one that it did right, and this new variation where excuse me, should have added in this condition. It should have said, when did we say that she's chayev? That's when there was no way, out, no way out. But if there was a way out, she would be putter. That's called split up the case into two parts and teach it. So the point being here is that when you have two cases mentioned in the Mishnah, here the case of the woman and here the case of the shliach based in, okay, one the woman, it says, is chayev when she's uh, cuts her eskapa. She has to pay money when she hurts this man. And another case where the shliach is potter when he hurts uh, 
a person, he's on Shlich the base then. Okay, and we want to know in which case is she Chayev. So it should be from the Mishnah that she's Chayev in all cases. Because if she's Potter in, in a case, then the Mishnah should have broken up her din into two parts and not switched the scene to the base din. So that's called Liflog the Lisnei Bedito. Okay. Okay. Now. Here's the third little section here, and he speaks about Kashiyesh Cholek al Hagdama Ein Lahakshos Pishita. Okay, he says, if someone argues about a principle, okay, you see in front of you, so if there, once there's an argument, then, then the person who's writing it has a Kiddush. So that's what we said, you always have to look. He says, Afim Yir Shahu Betachlis Pishitus. Even if it looks like a Spish. Pashut, so sometimes the, uh, the the Gemara will say, wait a minute, this looks obvious. So the Gemara will say, Ki yom lecha omru ela la melhu tana omara shechalukbo. So you always have to make sure that when you say Peshitta, that there's no other uh, dissenting opinion. Okay? Ki yisabah babakama gabi kasafim hari heim kakarka dakshinim Peshitta the Hikshua Lav Harush, look, he brings the Rushi of the the the, the, the Tosfos. Amai Peshita Hoshmur the Kamre, the Yetur Duk Vatishkach. So he shows you that this rule is a rule because the Rush uh, has a problem with this Gemara because the Gemara says Kasafim Harehem Kakarka, and then asks, wait a minute, it's an obvious statement. And the, the Rush says, wait a minute, it's not an obvious statement because there's a bar mach locus. So even over here it may be Peshitta. That's the rule he wants to bring out, is that whenever the Gemara says a, a statement, even in a place it may look Peshitta, it may, it, you have to make sure that there's no other cholek. You should, really shouldn't say Peshitta if there's, a, if there's a cholek on it, even though it seems that it's uh, in the place may be uh, Peshitta. Okay. Let's um, we'll do a few more minutes here. We'll do Simon test. You know, can we can we stop because I have to go to run to a meeting. So um. okay, that's good. No, that's good. Let's stop here. So it's actually a very good place to stop. Okay. Okay. Let's say that. <laughs> have a good week. Okay, you too. Uh, whatever left of it, and. Uh, Slowly, I'm, I'm really uh, excited to, um, what I want to do after we finish this will probably take us another week or so, not too long, because it's really just very short, is to take a real, uh, it's uh, actually, that's it, it's only that's one, it. this okay. is the end, this is the last chapter. So, it's to really take a good good example and to go through it again. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Okay, bye.